A very warm welcome to the MTD Technical Corner, simplification of the programming of automation. Now, Ash, welcome to this Technical Corner, really interesting one today. Yeah, so hopefully I should be able to run through um, a little bit of a brief explanation of what the product is and how to program a part. I mean, it's a massive barrier to entry when I speak to people um, in regards to the adoption of automation. You know, I think it's the fear of the unknown. Is it complicated to program, a, to program the robot? Can I do it? Um, it's going to be great if you can alleviate them concerns because, I mean, automation in this day and age is a must. Yes, definitely. And hopefully I can show you that it, it isn't difficult. You don't need prior robotic knowledge. Um, if you can run the machine tool, you're more than capable to set the robot. By the technological advancements in the robo job with the mill assist um, and the turn assist certainly kind of uh, prove that. And um, it's going to be great to see this example. So uh, can you give us a demo, uh, please, Ash? So just to show you what the, the, the robotic cells, what they look like, and a few different examples you can have with regards to the footprint, with regards to how the cell might form. So we've got different examples here where you've got a, a, a light scanner, which is like a, a floor scanner, um, and then you've got a fixed garden, and then you've got a light curtain on that example and that example. So it, it generates an ease of approach. The robot doesn't dominate the machine or dominate the cell. So if you're not going to use the robot, it's not, it's parked and it's out of the way. For example, he's in his home position there and you've got a side load on a five axis there, side load on a three axis, and then a multitasking machine where he's parked and he's out of the way. Um, so more examples. So Asha, before we move on to that, that's it. this is really illustrating how you can um, introduce automation to any company, to any machine. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So um, we, Hydrofeed, will take care of an automatic door that um, allows the robot to load and unload, and we will take care of the robot interface as well that allows the robot to communicate with the lathe. But milling, which I'm not sure everybody would know, is we'll, we'll supply the vices, we'll, we'll help you supply uh, some work holding if need be as well. So uh, we, we take everything into account. I mean, automated work holding is a big thing. Now, you've got some more examples of this, uh, Ash. Yeah, so I just wanted to show in, in this example where um, it, it, it's, it's no obstruction for the operator, the robot. So again, if you're not using it, he's parked and he's out of the way. So this example here, there's, there's a tool changer door that we need to take into account the swing of the door. So make sure that, that it's built in, it allows you to do it, and the operator can still access the panel. Um, obviously, the robot's not in his home position there, but that's just an example to show those areas. So Ash, once we've got the layout um, and the customer is happy with the layout, you know, we've got the strokes of the robot, we've got the right payloads in regards to the components and the materials that they're making the components mm -hmm. um, from, the work holdings in place, so on and so forth. It, does it then come down to the programming? What's the Definitely, next step? Definitely, yeah. So programming wise, so if we look at another couple of examples here, this has got a pallet unload example. So things, key things you should say, the basis of the start of this is the robot needs to know a user frame and a user frame is a datum. And based upon that datum, you tell it the size of your part and it will know where to go based upon the size of the part. So you tell it the height of the device, the depth of the device. And we've set that user frame or datum, which is the base of the device. For example, here, a user frame on these examples is user frame one might be the spindle, user frame two might be the sub spindle, user frame three might be the table, four might be the pallet and vice versa with the turnover station as well. So based upon those user frames. So their user frames are like G-codes. They're like datums, but not within the machine. They could be outside of the machine too. Exactly. So, but the, the, the path the robot takes is generic to every user frame. So you don't need to tell the robot its path it knows where it's going to each of those user frames and that will make sense in the software. So we set all your datums on install, so your datums are set. You tell it the size of your part and the flow of events where you want him to go and pick and place from. So uh, briefly, pallet unload enables your stocker to be stacked full of raw material on top of each other. The pallet unload allows finished parts to be put, not touch other things and, and sit nicely. So if you've machined a ball end, you place it down, it's going to want to fall over. So you can put a chocolate box style inlay that allows it to rest in it. Um, so good for a lot of, uh, a lot of aesthetic parts. Uh, some things we see with regards to um, single spindle machines, in particular on turning, so uh, a turnover station that allows the robot to do first and second op. 
um, as long as your work holding can hold it. And then with milling, you can have a separate vise maybe on a three axis table, a five axis table and a three axis and we'll do all five operations and turn it over and finish the part. So Ashley, you also supply the grippers dependent on the billets, the, the, whether it's raw material, finished part. You can supply the different types of grippers, which is in, an important aspect of automation. Definitely, and, and, and the flexibility side. So as you can see, the robot have, have scales on each head, so depending if it's turning or milling. Um, these particular set of grippers, they can reverse down to hold on from 10 mil to 150 mil. So you've not got lots of sets of grippers kicking about. So you have a head for raw parts and a head for finished parts, and, and the same, same with turning applications. And there's a, equally the same stroke uh, that the jaws allow you to have, just like a three jaw on a lathe, you just bring them into grip a, um, a, a, a smaller or bigger part. Now, once all these considerations have been taken into account, um, the robot knows where it is, you've done the layout for the client, then it simply comes down to parameters and the different types of parts, and, and is that where the programming comes in? That's exactly it. So I suppose um, a, a, an, an example of that may be to, to look at the software now. Um, so what we mentioned about user frames, so just to illustrate the point of what a, a user frame is, just to, to enforce that, so you can see on the, the lathe here, a user frame is that spindle, and a bit of a zoom in on it, and that five axis machine, that table, that's the user frame on it, so you've got your X, Y, Z. Then up here in this corner, we've got a mill assist essential table, uh, which is a grid plate, which the robot will load and unload to, and then the turning example you mentioned before, again, you can see where a user frame is taken from. So based upon those user frames and the details, we're gonna program the parts on the table um, in the milling software on the mill assist example. So that there's other products within the range that allow for more capacity of parts, but the basics of this is this mill assist unit. It's a single piece, you can move it up and move it around if you need to. No, it's not an obstruction for the front of the machine, but the, the layout might look something like that image over there where you have a series of pins which separate the components. Now that's just a grid plate on that surface so the pins can go in multiple positions so the flexibility is huge. Uh, and you can also just chuck a big piece of sheet metal. So it's, it's really thing. easy really. You set the datum inside the machine which can be changed if you're moving the work holding within the machine. Yeah. Or if you're changing the pins for different size parts you can change the the, the datum outside the machine. So effectively, the robot just needs to know where it is and where That's it's going. Where he's going. So uh, yeah, again, Millen, if you've got multiple vice positions on install, tell us where those vice positions are and we'll set different user frames for them and you select that particular one that you go to. Yeah. So if I pull up the software, so the, this is what the software screen looks like. So it's a separate control from the machine CNC control itself. So you flow through these four tabs along the top. So you start, configure, position and automate. As we said before, you tell it the size of your billet and it tells you how many you're gonna get and, it, and, and what path it's going to take. So you write your component number in and your client name, for example. You can save hundreds of thousands of parts within the program itself. So once you've done one, you've done one. Um, and then your flow of events is up here at the top. So yeah, MAE is mill assist essential. That's the raw parts. From the raw parts go into the miller machine, then from there, your parts go back to the table of the Melissa's Essential. But if I've got a turnover gripper, I can drag in the turnover, drag in another machine, and now I've turned the part over and I'm putting it back in the machine. So raw parts into the machine, turned over, second up, back on the table. So that goes to that user frame so he knows where he's going and what the method is. And also a pallet if you want to use that for your finished parts. But for, for speed, we'll just program um, one in, raw parts in the machine and out. So we're going to go to the configure page along the top up here. And this example we've got down here. So over here on this side, we've got you can see you're you're punching the size of that billet. So that billet is 70 by 62 by 57. So it builds the picture of your part there. So raw parts always orange, finished parts always green. So within your finished part here, you can add and remove layers. So if I go to the top layer over here and I'm gonna remove material and I'm gonna put a pocket in it of 30 by 30 by 30. So you can add details and add features that the robot needs to know that you're gonna grip onto, but it doesn't make sense in this scenario. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna um, just block that out within a base layer of the component itself. So you fit my finished part is 66 by 53 by 
46. So we've just programmed raw, just programmed finished. Based upon that information, the robot now knows how many parts you're going to get on the table. So if I hit MAE up here, it tells me I'm going to get 45 in one layer and I'm going to get two layers. So you need one um, pocket here for one part because the first finished one will go back there. So effectively that gives you 89 parts. Okay. So that particular part with probing, with uh, looking at, uh, quite carefully at backing off the tools and running it unmanned, maybe nine, 10 minutes. Okay. Let's say that's a 10 minute part and that will run for 15 hours unmanned for that part. So it's like you mentioned, Ashley, it's all about the flexibility, being able to do high volume, low volume work, so, being able to reprogram the mill assistant. And I've got to say, it seems very easy and very user friendly. It's very conversational. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, I mean, can you give us any other examples of the problems that may incur? Uh, yeah, so when... definitely. So on, if I hit Miller Machine, because I'm under the configure page, I'm going to see there's my vice. But if you've got more than one vice in the machine, you'll see multiple images. Here you've got the jaw height. If you change your set of soft jaws, you set that height. So we've set our datum user frame top of their vice. So if you've got um, back to our work pieces, and we can uh, and we can look at the parts based upon that. So if I now hit position, which is up here, you can see that the robot will give you a proposal of how it will grip the component. So you tell it things like you've got your gripper library, you've got your grip depth on here. This example that you can see, we're holding on to 12 mil of the component. Let's just say, for an example, I want to hold on to 10. The image reflects what you're doing. So if you've made a mistake and you've put 100, you'll see it dive through the table. So because it, it's given you the graphical image, it relies on that, that, that information. So you can see we've got pick up here and then place over here. So place will obviously, of course, be into the vice. So you can see that we're burying it in the vice by five mil over here. But it might be that, yes, we're going to use a set of drawers that crimp the part and it's aluminium like we do on that part. And it actually holds on to five mil. So we, we might, or we might want to bury it by a bit more. So you tell it how much you're going to bury it by. You've got, as you've just said, picking up on maybe things that you might need to do. You've got an X and a Y offset. So if I wanted to offset that in Y by 50 mil, it'll offset in the vice. So you might want to overhang the vice, machine yeah. it parts. So the flexibility in it's huge where you can move and change the parts. So um, now that I've shown that offset in Y, I'll just pop that back um, to be back to the center of the vice. So again, you've got the red dots to, uh, to hit the confirm down in that corner over here and it gets rid of that red dot for you. So you can see now the other side of the machine, you'll see that the finished part is now green to show that it's, uh, it's green and it's the new sizes of the part. You have all the same information, the gripper library, the position, so that you grip depth, orientation. So it might be that you wanna actually turn the head 90 degrees and see, and, and see if you wanna grip it on a different face. It might be that you wanna go into your gripper library and instead of using a single and a double, you might wanna go single and a single. Look at it. There you are. Um, but the, the, it just goes down to that flexibility and shows you what, what's, what's possible. And also one key thing here is the head of the robot is like a four jaw chuck. So if you can't do that with the robot, you can just change your jaws to go either there or there. So you can choose a different position on that head of the robot. So if I just hit confirm and, and we move on from there. So red dot disappears and then place back onto the table. So that's that last move over here. And I confirm that. Once I've done that, your automate page lights up and it tells you where to put your part, put your pins on the table and corner pieces they're called, so just a piece of angle. And I might say that I've got raw parts, I've got 80 to do, and it tells you where to put them on the table, gives you a next up in that top right. It tells you where to position the jaws and the gripper head, so position eight and position seven for your raw head, finished head. Then you hit robot to jaw change position and he drops right down to your level so you're not looking on a set of step ladders to, to try and adjust the jaws. Up here, really, really important piece of information up here, this R. It's a bit grayed out because we're not hooked up to a machine, but that says home. So if you hit home and or you've done something in the robots and you're worried about what you've done, just come up here, press that and hit home and it'll reverse and go back to his home position. So that key feature means you're not trying to pick up a teach pendant of a robot and figure out what's to do next. So, so. Ashley, you've certainly illustrated that this is, is such an easy piece of software to use and program. It's simplified the, the, the process for sure. You know, I think that any 
end users that have watched this demonstration that have had any concerns. This should really alleviate them concerns through the technological advancements that you've made in this software to make it easy. It's a fantastic demo, Ashley. Good, thanks. Thank you.